with it, we have a faultless warrant to accept that it is for His greatness and our great. However, this isn't a guarantee that applies to those separated from Christ who stay subject to God's fury. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. For this to be true, one must be in Christ. In these strange days, let us invite the lost to come to Christ in faith and take hold of Romans chapter 8, verse 28 for themselves. Mark chapter 6, verse 56. Jesus touches the sick. Also, any place he came, in towns, urban areas, or open country, they laid the debilitated in the commercial centers and entreated him that they may contact even the edge of his piece of clothing. Also, the same number of as contacted it was made well. While entryways for evangelism are opening lately, our capacity to share the gospel seriously is muddled by the need to remove ourselves socially. Our cutting-edge clinical information is defective. However, one thing we know with sureness is that keeping up appropriate limits can forestall the transmission of hazardous illnesses. Yet in this specific situation, it's shocking to perceive that the Lord Jesus Christ violated comparative limits drawn by the law specialists of his days, purposefully contacting the wiped out to make them well, even outsiders. While we don't have Jesus' equivalent capacity to recuperate, we can share his empathy to those individuals who are feeling separated, the old, or those restoratively isolated as of now, for different reasons, should hear that God of the Bible is a God who leaves the security of paradise, goes into the delicate human tissues, takes our profound sickness upon himself, and mends the stinging by getting them with his own two hands. We owe our salvation to the way the Lord Jesus never socially removed himself from heathens. So while we ought to keep up appropriate distance and use astuteness, we should likewise be driven by his equivalent sympathy that prompted Christ to resist the shows of his day for the sake of adoration. We owe our salvation to the way that the Lord Jesus never socially removed himself from miscreants. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus relieves our anxieties. Come to me, all who work and are substantially loaded, and I will give you rest. A University of Michigan concentrates from March 31st demonstrated that since the beginning of the pandemic, 50% of members detailed repeating nervousness. Almost a third depicted indications coordinating clinical discouragement. It is no secret why. With U.S. joblessness claims moving toward 20% and passing tallies conveyed to all of us by message pop-up, the characteristic human reaction is despair. Maybe your non-Christian partner, associate, companion, or relative necessities realize that Jesus is a Savior who vows to facilitate the weight of life. I dread that those of us who are not kidding about religious philosophy, self-included, with an end goal to keep away from the threats of the delicate, watered down, American good news of solace and inclusivity, fall into a contrary outrageous in which we disregard the delicacy and leniency of Christ. We neglect to lecture what Jonathan Edwards so regularly portrayed as the excellencies and pleasantness of Christ. God's equity and fierceness are genuine and should be fled, yet when we escape them, we wind up in the empathetic arms of the Good Shepherd. He doesn't snuff out a seething whip or break a wounded reed, nor speak more loudly in the roads. 
Isaiah chapter 42, verse 3. Jesus is close and accessible to all who are distressed with dread, stress, and despond. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. Jesus saves the world. For God so loved us that he gave his only Son, that whoever has faith in him ought not to die, yet have unceasing life. For God sent his Son into the world to announce to the world that they can be saved through him. Maybe you can't remember 12 Bible refrains for evangelism. That is okay. We as a whole have John 3.16 retained. Instead of letting commonality breed scorn, we should perceive that what our loved ones may require most, right currently, is a truth. It might feel like the world is finishing, yet in Christ the world is being saved. Honestly, evil and degenerate pieces of the world will be dissolved away like dross on the most recent day. Be that as it may, the world itself is bound for brilliance, following the example of Christ in death and restoration. Jesus is Lord, and he is making everything new. Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. We are welcome to join this blossoming new creation, currently by settling our confidence in him as Savior. As a feature of God's arrangement for astronomical reestablishment, he is focused on all people countries, clans, and tongues participating in salvation through Christ. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. Furthermore, this is why we should get out some great word to our neighbors for a change. Prayer of Acceptance of Jesus Christ Almighty God, I thank you for your love for me. You have blessed me with your only Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You allow me to proclaim myself loud and clear that I have become a child of God. I had strayed so far from Jesus. I walked by sight and not by faith, and I bitterly ask forgiveness. I repent. I give you my heart as a sacrifice in order to receive the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Purify my heart with the blood that was shed for me. Make your glory shine through your light flickering in my life so that I may become and keep my status as a child of God. May my life be a perfume of good odor and keep my name in your heavenly book. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for redeeming and saving me. To you, the honor, the reign, the strength, the power, the glory, the domination, and the majesty with thanksgiving for centuries of the centuries. Eternal Father, thank you for having redeemed and saved me. It is in Jesus' name that I have thus made this prayer. Amen.